In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are again gathered around this Eucharistic table. Let us acknowledge that we are sinners in need of, in need of God's mercy. <coughs> I confess <coughs> to Almighty God, and to you, my <clears throat> brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, Let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us. Because his life is not like that of others and different are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his Father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hands of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. 
Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, He rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Please stand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feasts, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus tried, cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Because his hour had not yet come. That is how our gospel ended. Hindi pa niya oras. Yan ang sinasabi natin kapag ang isang tao ay nakaligtas sa siguradong kamatayan. Hindi pa niya oras. 
Pero sinasabi din natin, kumisan, kapag oras mo na, oras mo na. It's kind of fatalistic that when our time comes, no matter what we do, no matter how rich we are, how educated we are, we cannot prevent death from dying, from coming. Kapag oras mo na, oras mo na. Mga kapatid, ganun ba ang nangyari kay Jesus? Oo, sa Ebanghelyo, sabi sa atin, walang gumalaw sa Kanya sapagkat hindi pa niya oras. Pero yung unang Biyernes Santo, nung siya'y namatay sa krus, yung ba'y talagang oras na niya? Does it mean that on the first Good Friday, Jesus was not able to escape anymore? That Jesus had no choice but to die? Hindi na siya nakalusot? Parang hindi po. Kasi alam naman natin, kapag binasa natin ang banal na kasulatan, ang lahat ay nangyari ayon sa kagustuhan at plano ni Jesus. He was not caught off guard. He was not given a choice. No. He had a choice. And that is the first reminder of our gospel today. Jesus chose to die. Jesus chose to die. Kaya nga kapag tinignan natin ang kamatayan ng Panginoon, makikita natin doon ang tindi ng kanyang pagmamahal sapagkat pinili niyang mamatay alang-alang sa atin. E sino ba naman tayo para pag-alayan ng buhay? Makasalanan, pasaway, matigas ang ulo. Pero dahil nga tayo'y makasalanan, pasaway, at matigas ang ulo, si Jesus ay naparito upang iligtas tayo. At ang kanyang pag-aalay ng buhay sa krus ay sadyang pagpapasyang ginawa ni Jesus. That is why we should always be grateful. Whenever you look at the crucifix, there's a small crucifix at the altar, there is a cross there, perhaps in your homes there are crosses, crucifixes. Kapag tinignan ninyo yung krusipiho, lagi nyo sabihin sa Panginoon, Panginoon, salamat po sapagkat niyakap mo ang krus para sa akin. Jesus voluntarily and freely gave Himself us up for us. But the second reminder of the Gospel is this. Jesus is in control. Jesus is in control. God is in control. I just would like to remind you that four years ago, today, yeah, March 15, we had our first lockdown. It was a Sunday, I remember. I was in Paco Church, and that was the first time in my life as a priest that the church was closed. Churches were closed. Walang public masses, hindi ba? Sarado at hindi kayo pwedeng makalabas. Sarado ang mga simbahan, nagsimula ang mga online masses. Pero alam nyo, yung iba, parang medyo excited eh. No? Walang pasok, yung iba work from home, luminis ang paligid dahil walang mga sasakyang nag, na bumibiyahe. Yung iba, tuwan-tuwa kasi lockdown. Pero na-realize natin, yung lockdown na pala yun, hindi lamang for two weeks. 
Hindi lamang for one month. Dumaan ang dumaan ang mga araw at mga linggo at mga buwan. Hindi pa rin tayo makalabas at nagsimula tayong mabalitaan na mamatay ang mga tao. Na mamatay ng nag-iisa, na mamatay ng hindi nakasama ang mga mahal sa buhay, at pagkamatay, kikrimate, ipinasok mo ang isang mahal sa buhay ng katawan, ibibigay sa iyo ng abo sa isang lalagyan. And then, we began to realize, grabe pala ito. Pero kung babalikan natin yung mga pangyayaring yon four years ago, pinatunayan sa atin, God was in control. We prayed, uh, Oratia Imperata, and then God performed a miracle through vaccines, and now, we, could go, we can go out again. God is in control. So my dear brothers and sisters, today, we are given two graces to be grateful for. Number one, that Jesus died for us, died for you. We should be grateful for that. And number two, we know that Jesus is in control. And we should also be grateful for that. Amen. Please stand. As we journey through life, let us pray for the courage to speak and work for the truth. As we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That members of the church may strive to spread the good news of Jesus throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that by contemplating on Jesus' suffering on the cross, persons may turn to, from unbelief to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that we may be at peace with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that the sick and the poor may experience the healing and loving presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may finally enjoy the peace of the heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us pray for our own particular needs. Let us also silently thank the Lord for the many graces that we receive. Father in heaven, you sent your Son to suffer for us. Grant that through our faith in him, we may struggle against unbelief in ourselves and in the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Please stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our many sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. After this, uh, after the final blessing, we will open the exhibit of the images representing the passion death of Christ. The exhibit will run until the last mass of Palm Sunday. So you are most, in, uh, most uh, welcome to see the exhibit. And hopefully, when you look at these images, you will not just be awed, no, but also be grateful for what Jesus did for us. We will now pray. Father in heaven, you allow men to make images of the saints, make images of the Lord Jesus Christ, to remind them of their goodness and their kindness, and for the merits of Jesus who died on the cross. We ask you to bless this exhibit, and may the people who will look at them be reminded of how much you loved us. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Sarin